So I will start. Uh, so secret feature, a uh, new kind of new, not really new. I think is something where I want to to discuss on about atomics, uh, a little bit about atomics, something on secret group algorithm. But on this one, uh, Habi have far more experience and they think with me. And on secret reduction, that I think, uh, yeah, it's really at the beginning it was not part of the secret spec. The first secret spec, but it was added in secret 2020 because of. HPC people because we are using a lot of reduction. So I want to see that. And after also, maybe we can share. I did a lot of benchmarking. I have some benchmark comparing, for example, open MP reduction, seeker reduction, CUDA reduction, and everything. So I can point you to some link if you want to rerun the example or something like that. So, but first, uh, let's go via Atomic. So because we let me close this one. So we have race condition, right? Of course, because uh, we are running stuff in parallel, uh, as the name implies, parallel for. So we have a, a, a multitude of work item running at the same time. And if you if you try to to write into the same address from multiple things, you have a race condition, right? And you need to do something to 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 avoid using the race condition. Because as a seeker, we don't have any ordering of uh, the execution of work, work item, right? So if you, as we told before, if you want to, to to understand a little more on all this kind of guarantee about like the progress of work item inside the work group or between different work group and everything, I really recommend John talk and the paper. But for now, we can just assume that we are, we don't have any particular particular ordering with, between work items. So every work item can be scheduled at any time and can run uh, in parallel. So we cannot assume anything about it. And if you're reading or writing to the same area of memory, you know, reading and writing, you, you may have a problem because of synchronization, right? Nothing is you. And this one is kind of problematic because sometimes it will work, sometimes it will not work or something like this. So. So you need to do something about this kind of race condition. And the answer is, is easy. The answer is atomic. And uh, you have multiple uh, way of doing atomic, multiple memory model that you can use. So this one, uh, maybe Ronan is really the expert in C++, but I think we, we stole this one. We got inspired by the C++, C++ atomic ref. So we really, I think it's maybe a common theme in SQL, it's like we try to, when new things are implemented in C++, we try to, to bring it back to, to SQL and all this kind. So to be as close as possible with SQL. So for example, for the atomic, we did that. So what you do, you create an atomic reference of your type. And after you put this kind of memory ordering and memory scope, and after the value you will want to the memory region you want to perform an atomic reference an atomic on it and after you can use for example fetch and add who will just add one to to these things add plus one so you you have different uh, uh, memory ordering relaxed and everything i think uh, it will be uh, i don't know six hours to really explain the difference between the two between all of them but you have different memory order if you want to, to optimize for your atomic so yeah so for example <coughs> i think here it will work practically zero and after you have two we put two because this thread will take the atomic values it will be the first and after all this one and everything and you know that nothing will be uh, running in parallel it will be an atomic you have different different fetch uh, capacities you know, in OpenMP, you have Pragma OpenMP, I don't know, Mac, atomic max, atomic mean, and something like that. So here's the same thing. We have fetch add sub max mean and everything. And also more like Boolean uh, and or for integrals and everything. And just read the spec to get all the fetch we have. And uh, yeah, I think nothing really. Uh, oh, I mean, we are this like really the C way of doing atomic. We are reusing it. So the good thing is like 
the best is, I mean, the best to start, you can just put device and relax and, uh, but sometimes you want to tune, right? You want to know that you want to do, for example, your atomic only on the work group, or you want to do an atomic, for example, it's on only the, the share local memory because you want to optimize for it. Because of course, the more higher you go to the hierarchy chain of the memory, the more expensive the atomic will be, right? Because the hardware will need to do more things to synchronize. So it's best to try to minimize to, to the, the lowest possible uh, memory scope possible. And so this is exactly what he says here. So you, you can change the address space to be able to uh, do this kind of thing. And as usual, welcome, uh, benchmarking are welcome. You should benchmark this kind of thing. And if it doesn't work, you should report to your favorite implementer because maybe the you have a they don't, don't really take it seriously or whatever. Some people have, we always have bug, but yeah. So the, the point is like, you can change the memory ordering and the memory scope of everything to be able to optimize for what you want. So we give you these flexibilities to be able to optimize. So this is the first thing about Atomic. So after doing the example, we'll see how to implement, for example, a naive reduction. Uh, the naive reduction is just, you know, each work item will just do a group, a big atomic on the on the thing. <coughs> Maybe something to note here is like you, the seeker have some query to be able to know if you can do an atomic, for example, from a, a shared memory, uh, from, for example, from a device memory to a host memory, or this kind of thing, you have some query to be able to know what is the maximum scope you can have for your atomic, because some hardware may not allow you, for example, if you're on the device to be atomic, to do some atomic on memory, allocating on the host or this kind of thing. Some device allow, some device doesn't allow it and because SQL try to be portable, we have query for that. So you can ask for this kind of query. <coughs> so I think atomic is one of the way of doing, uh, not low level, but some algorithm really need atomics and some also some algorithm need to perform special operation in one of the work group. As you know, in SQL, we, bun we, we bundle a lot of work items together to form a work group and you want maybe to do some algorithm on this work group and kind of fast because Many GPUs, hardware, for example, of CPUs, they have some vector instructions that you can reuse to do this kind of uh, work group algorithm. So SQL gives you a way of do this kind of uh, hierarchical parallelism or whatever you want to call it, to do this kind of optimization. So you, you for example, you can do a reduction. So we'll see, we'll see later a reduction over all the iteration space, but you can do a, a, some reduction over the simple work group, or you can do a max, a, a many or something like that. Also, you can do any operation, like uh, I think it's called ballot maybe, but any of these, any, all, none, and all of these things to be able to, to know some values. So for example, some pop count or something like that, you can do this kind of thing. Or some permutation. So maybe think of, lot of the thing of work group group algorithm like uh, some vector instructions that you want to do in a bunch of data like scan x with this scan and everything so please see the spec and tell us what do you think if we are missing any or something like that and this one is more for advanced users who really want to to tune their kernel to to get the, the best performance because most of the time, those high level constructs are already, you know, after optimized with some specific instruction and everything. So we'll see some examples later to show you that. <coughs> and for now, we say group algorithm because we have different type of group. We have the work group with just a collection of work item. And after inside this work group, we also have subgroup who may have different uh, progress guarantee, uh, different capabilities, different level of uh, performance. I mean, thing you can do on it. So the group algorithm can operate on this work group and subgroup and will be implemented differently. So it gives you really this kind of flexibilities. If you want to do, for example, a reduction only on the subgroup, you can do that. And uh, yeah. You, 
we need to be non-divergent. So uh, yeah, don't put if or this kind of thing. Or if you really need if, you do the standard masking strategy to be able to avoid. And as usual, the, the specification of group algorithm is far far long, and we will see all the list and all the information about this kind of group algorithm. So maybe uh, now the reduction, maybe the thing with most of the people we need and will use. So uh, yeah, please maybe we show later maybe. But please don't use atomic to do reduction. It's really, really a bad idea. Uh, and please don't roll your own reduction. It's also a pretty bad idea. It's really hard to do. <laughs> and to do is hard to do for one other way. But if you really want to be portable, it's even harder. So please try to avoid uh, re-implementing your reduction. Oh, I don't know. Some people really, it's like, you know, re-implanting their some and their sort algorithms. Some people really like to implement reduction, but I will advise against. So this is how this is how it works. Uh, you create a, a sum reduction object where you say, okay, I will do some, uh, for example, initial, I will do some plus operation on it. And uh, I will take this pointer. This is with my my sum is really the pointer will be allocated on top, and I will allocate, I will do my reduction on, on PTR and it will be this type of plus. And then when I create my uh, control group handler, I use my parameter for as usual, but now I have a new template parameter who is my sum reduction. And then uh, as usual, I need to, uh, no, so, and then when inside my lambda, my lambda have no two parameters. One is a traditional item or ND item and the other is a, is a sum. We, who correspond to, to the sum reduction object, which have been initialized uh, to zero. And then I can just use it with plus equal or other, you have an other accessor if you want to use here, number function. And then at the end of this thing, so here I should have a little dot wait and the dot wait will wait for everything to finish and uh, my PTR value will, will have been updated. So PTR, my pointer to create my object, my object I pass to some reduction and after here, I use a, if you really want to be ugly, you can put PTR here and reuse PTR, but it will be, <laughs> I don't recommend doing that. So uh, Thomas, we have a question. Is, is there an equivalent to CUDA's cooperative groups? Um, so I, I admit that I'm, I'm not, um, an expert on cooperative groups, but since this one is for Avi, uh, yes, I believe there is an equivalent for cooperative groups. Uh, let me just find out and put it in the chat in the meantime. I think so. Cooperative group is group who are forcing to be executed at the same time, something like this. Well, I mean, I will let Abby find something in the spec. I, I'll put it in the Slack chat. Okay, so perfect. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. Thank you. So I think also, also yeah, with all this hierarchical parallelism, I think we, with the heap seeker, we have a, they want to, to improve it and maybe to so some of the API were uh, deprecated and everything. So not to group, but some of those things. So I think we are, if you're interested working on that also, we are looking for people. I think the heap seeker will be more than happy to, to have some feedback on their proposal. <clears throat> and here before we did the plus and plus equal, but you can change, you can use, for example, maximum, max, and now you have this combine. And I think combine is, uh, don't quote me on that, please verify, but I think combine is uh, the, the standard way of saying you want to do some operation. I think you can always use combine if you use plus, but I think plus equal is really more natural. We overload the plus equal in this uh, in this object. Yeah, that's that's correct. The plus equal is kind of syntactic sugar, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. So maximum and uh, yeah. So any question after we'll see some example of uh, how to implement a reduction. 
I and, have a uh, question. Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry. Please. Yeah, um, you mentioned that it's not a good idea to write our own reduction function, but how we can do when we have, for example, a, a specific reduction um, operation that it's not add maximum, minimum, things like that. It's something else. Oh, yeah, good question. So I think, okay, let me. You can have a binary operator defined. Yeah, exactly. For your case, yeah. So let me open the spec. So you can specify your own, uh, uh, your own functor or whatever to be able to do, to do your own reduction. Let me see the, the signature. But this is what Abby said here. Here you use SQL maximum, but you can use your own, I think. This is how it worked. Here you can define your own binary operator. We'll do some aggregation. And you just plug it here. And after the runtime, we'll, we'll use that for you. This is how it works. Thanks. And let me just verify if it is a reduction, reduction interface. Yeah, I think it is here somewhere we have a function. Yeah, you see it's a binary operation combiner. So you can implement your own combiner. For example, as you said, if it is not max, but something more, more interesting, you can just implement this function. And here you just need to pass here and boom, it will work. Thanks, Thomas. Yeah, you're welcome. Because, yeah, please go ahead. So is the result stored in a PTR or installed in my Max? Um, I'm, I'm a little confused. And yeah, good, good curve. So inside, so here you pass by reference, right? So here it, it's stored in my Max. So please don't use PTR. I, I guess the specs say it is UB if you start using PTR zero inside this thing at the same time of combine. I guess it is really undefined behavior. So here you should use uh, my max if you want to do. I mean, my max is an object, so this is a good thing. It will give you some, you know, some problem if you try to do something else with it. But at the end of this submit, indeed, it will be stored in PTR. Right. So inside this parallel for it is inside my max, and after is inside the submit. Okay, so, so my is your question, which mm -hmm. one is the reduction variable where my results are stored? Um, the reduction variable is, um, I think in the in the body, in the kernel body, it is my max, right? But uh, yeah, after the execution of kernel, the result will be stored in 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 a variable pointed by PTR. Exactly. It's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. PTR zero. Yeah. Yeah. I think here you can put PTR zero if you prefer. Right. You can put unperson PTR zero if you if, if you think it's more legit. You can also use a buffer as well. It's it's worth uh, mentioning. Oh yeah. Even if you use a buffer, it will work as usual. It will do the data transfer for you. In the same time. Yeah. Uh Thomas, if I may, uh, yeah, please go ahead. the question related to the cooperative groups, uh, does that sound reasonable? It's it's nothing but group algorithms. I wasn't really specific, but uh, does it answer your question? I mean, you can you can put it in the chat. Thanks. There might be some newer things in the the cooperative groups in terms of the the th well does thread block cluster does that fit within the cooperative group API or is that some something entirely different in, in CUDA? It's it doesn't so okay Sickle does not really uh, do a one to one mapping for all the attributes in the cooperative groups, but uh, the general architecture uh, is nothing but group algorithms. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I cannot really point out the thread group and its synchronizations. They, they map in some form. Uh, yeah, I mean, so one might want to try using cyclomatic tool to check the, the conversions, but I don't think any tool is that 
advanced to port uh, the cooperative groups um, uh, and the pipelines to be specific uh, yet. Yeah, that's all. So Konstantino says, so the translator tools will not touch cooperative group code yet. Um, uh, from my experience, uh, it, it's been, uh, I, I'm not up to date, but it might not work with the cooperative groups yet, but it's easy to find the equivalence. Uh, but uh, I mean, again, you might have to try with the cyclomatic uh, today because it's been in constant development. Yeah, there, there are teams in the company that are working on this full time on the cyclomatic tool. So I, I'm not sure what they're doing. They're not on, on my team necessarily, but um, it might it might be supported now. But yeah, you, you'd need to try uh, for yourself. Yeah, and please don't hesitate to open an issue or contact us if you want to, if you have a particular particular API you want to see. I think we are very... Because yeah, if you don't report the issues, they will not priori pre put it in the top of their list to implement. So I think it's always a good, good idea if you, if you think. So feature-wise, we should be able to transfer it, right? I think at the spec, we, my understanding is like, we provide a way of at least emulating everything. If it is not, I think we need to to improve the spec by doing that. So please, please try and let us know. We have a question of the implementation of the algorithm. So I don't know about specifically the CUDA one, I'm more in the level zero, but for example, yeah, they use shared memory. And for example, most of the reduction are atomic free. Atomic is maybe too expensive and it's not worth it. So what they are doing, at least in, for example, level zero or this kind of other backend is like, yes, they, they will say one, work item is kind of a master work item. And after using some shared memory to do some local, local stuff and have to reduce at the end and all of this, this kind of thing. And maybe, so they are atomic free to be able to really improve the. And also if you don't use atomic, the good thing is like your reduction can work for anything, right? Because for example, here, if you pass a complex double or some super sensing, large thing where you don't have atomic, native atomic, you, you, you will need to use some, I don't know, fetch, uh, combine and swap, no, it's not combine and swap, whatever and swap algorithm, and it will be super, super slow. So most of the time you you try to, I mean, one good thing is try to avoid using any atomic to be able to support really arbitrary data type. Who can be far more useful? So yes, yes, opt reduction should be really optimized. So if you, if you can beat them or, or the good thing to do is like you can compare, for example, CUDA reduction to SQL reduction and if you, if you see any performance difference, please open a bug. <laughs> it is something for this kind of reduction. In theory, uh, all these reduction are just syntaxing, syntaxic good so sugar, sugar. Sorry, and we should be able to to get more or less the same performance as as the raw raw CUDA. So now a little code. Demo to put here. Oh no, I lose my hand. That's a very kind of thing. Oh, good. I'm sorry about that. I tried to see that. Okay. Okay, I can uh, move you, load it again. Yeah. Okay, good. Play the code exercise. Zero, that is zero or secret reduction. So let's see the reduced name, the one you should uh, not write. Oh, okay. It's not that naive. So let's take the atomic, maybe. Yes, yeah, so the naive is just using no kind of fancy stuff. Um, oh, okay. So you see, so an atomic work like this. So at the beginning, we don't we don't care that much. And here, this is how it works. So you just have your 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 you do some memory copy, right? Just then you depend just to be sure that your memory copy finish. And and now you want to do this uh, 
this reduction over dev reduction zero. This is the memory you want to you want to reduce to. So you use dev reduce zero. And after you just do this fed edge and you do this super big uh, reduction using a lot of atomic and after you wait. So this is the first using the, the global atomic. So you see here, for example, we put memory stop devices. And uh, so this is the, the, the biggest scope we can have, I think, if I remember correctly. And here it is a more like, okay, try to not use that much global atomic because at least we know that it's really bad. What we can do is inside a little uh, uh, work, work group, we can do atomic on this kind of work group scope. And after, so all the work group will do some atomic. And after at the end, one, what we call the master of the local, uh, of the work group will do a big reduction on this scope device. So in this case, we use a little shared local memory to be able to do the reduction in time of this, but still using atomics. And you see how it works is we need to, to create a local accessor to be able to use the accessor memory. Uh, yeah, I know it's a little weird that we can use USM for everything ex except for uh, shared memory. We still need to use accessor, but for now it is the way it is. So we create a, an accessor of work group size. So this one will be used to do. Uh, to be able to, to synchronize between everything. And here a little for the local reduction, like every every work item will, uh, will reduce into this one. And here, the code is pretty straightforward. You have a local ID and it's a global ID. If you are your master of your work group, you put it to zero. You synchronize just to be sure that everybody will see zero. Then uh, you need to, to agglobate the global memory into your local memory. And then you do, you do this kind of little reduction atomic inside this. This is what it is important here, the memory scope work group, right? So you reduce the scope, the memory scope. So it is smaller, it should be faster. And you, here you do the local space. Then you, you did your local reduction, so you're good, you synchronize. And now you do this, this global reduction inside this uh, this global variable called dev reduce as before. So this one now, every master of the of the work group will do inside the, the fake patch. So what you did effectually is like you divide the number of global reduction of a global atomic, sorry, by the, the size of the work group. Okay, so this is what you do, and it is a local and global atomic. And now we can try to compile that and see, uh, sorry. Oh, oh. And it was called reduce atomic. Yeah, so the only drawback of uh, SQL is like it is C++, so it takes a while to compile, that's it. And you see, uh, it is indeed faster. You see, we took 0 0.5 for using global atomic, and uh, we took 0 0.4 for the local atomic. And uh, if you like this kind of thing, I think you can profile this number of code and do the ratio, and maybe the ratio is more or less equal of the difference in local global atomic. And at first approximation, we can say that local atomic are kind of uh, so fast, I mean, at first, as first approximation, local atomic are free. So now you are of this kind of things. One problem with this kind of approach, if you want to be really uh, picky, is like now you are using local memory. So what happens if you are using too much local memory or if your kernel are already using some local memory and uh, the code start being ugly? I mean, you don't want to write this kind of, uh, of code. And you are still do using some global atomic. So that means it's kind of uh, still not as fast as it can be, right? So, so what you can do 
for example. Now, if you, if you group algorithm, group algorithm, same code, and here, what we can do is do this group reduction, as we discussed before, where we do, uh, <coughs> before we were using atomic to be able to reduce over our work group, right? This is what we were doing. And this, it was kind of uh, not perfect because we are still using atomic, but we can do, and maybe the hardware have some capabilities of, you know, doing some reduction without atomic, right? They have some, uh, some special instruction, vector instruction to be able to reduce. Maybe we can use that. So this is what we are doing here. Here we are still using this local memory where we are into local memory. And after we, we do the reduction between all the local memory. And then same thing as before, we play, we do one atomic as a global space for all the work group to be able to do anything. And what we expect is now that this code will be faster than the one before, because what we benchmark is like, can we improve the, the speed of the local reduction? So the number of global, of global atomic stays the same, and the number of uh, local atomic is have really diminished. So maybe this guy, at worst case, this guy is implemented with the local atomic and the performance will be as similar and maybe this guy will implement it faster and we'll see the improvement. So let's see, reduce group algorithm. Okay, see. So you see, it's faster. We were at zero for eight and now we still improve for X. So now we are 10x faster than the full atomic. And it's not that big, right? It, it's kind of a small reduction. You can imagine that the performance will be even bigger for this one thing. Something we didn't show is like before atomic, what, uh, what you can do also is submit 20,000 different kernel <laughs> where you don't use any algorithm, where you just do a partial reduction, kind of a tree reduction without atomic, without group, and you just submit a lot of kernel. Uh, it was not fun to write and it was not particularly super fast. So it is a thing. And now we can have the, the, the reduce seeker reduction. Where in this case, we say, okay, uh, some people spend, uh, a team of people spend a lot of time implementing the best reductions they can think of. They are not even bound if they really want to to any seeker stuff. They can write directly this kind of code for each different backend. And, differently in PTX if they want or this kind of thing. And, and the code is first like far shorter because we don't need to deal with all this kind of thing. And we hope that uh, this code will be as fast as our best version and even maybe faster. And you see it's kind of far easier to write. We write a reduction. Here's the, the variable you, you want to do this step reduced with of size, uh, size one step reduced. We use depend on to be sure that we have the correct dependency. If not, what you need to do is do a little a q dot wait at the beginning because it is out of order. So you need to wait that those, those main copy finished. Here is just to say you want to, to initialize to zero because maybe you want to initialize from something else. I think this one is by default, so in theory you can remove it. And here, so this is no. this is not by default. Oh. It, my it'll it'll use just whatever value is in um oh. the buffer or the pointer. So because we're running this a hundred times or so to get the benchmark, you'll be accumulating uh the sums if you don't initialize it to zero. I see, because we are modifying some each time and not yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we'd be we'd be reducing again and again and again and accumulating these reductions. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I see. Good call. Thank you very much. And so let's see. Finger cross, I never run it. So let's see if it is faster or not. Maybe, or... maybe a spoiler. Um, so I had a previous version of this code uh, and one of the patches didn't make it into this one, but it's not necessarily 
it, it's going to be a little bit slower, I think. Um, it's faster. Oh no, it's ten times slower. Oh no, it's really so slower. The, the, no, this is this is a problem. So I, I had a patch for the previous one. It's not an apples to apples comparison because um, the 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 oh. global range of the kernel is different for both kernels. And we ah, can okay. So oh. the bigger your global range, the slower your reduction will be. If you're able to reduce your global range and make it smaller than your array, then you can actually have your your global range kind of striding along your array, and that'll be faster. The the commit that I I I did to fix this uh, didn't make it into this branch, so I'm I'm sorry about that. But it it in in the uh, previous branch it was the same speed as the group algorithms. I see. So I think let's see. Oh, sorry. Does some NV prof expert know how to see the work group size used on the name? I think we can add that. I don't remember. To see how many work group, I mean, size of the, the scheduling. I, I, I usually do NSYS profile. Oh, uh, NSYS. NSYS profile stats equal true. Profile oh. stats, yeah, yeah, equals true. Yeah, nice. No, it's exactly the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So, um, because, or maybe it's because the name is too big. No, I think you have a way of knowing the. So. You should have a way. Yeah, the name is too big. Already is. Yeah. Okay. So, what we can do is in, let's see, let's reduce. No. Reduce uh, secret reduction. We can just name the thing and it should work, I hope. Like this. You, you'll need to do a class class test. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I, I think that's still not going to look that nice. Yeah, maybe. You're right. Maybe I'm not right. I don't remember. We can list two arguments as one before. Yeah. So it should be the parallel for that you're. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're totally right. Yeah, it's not here. It's here. Yeah, maybe because it is a reduction. We have the name of the reduction and then the, the name of the. Well, we have some time. So. Yeah, de depending on the implementation, the, the reduction implementation can actually invoke another kernel that is whatever invisible to the user. Yeah, exactly. It's if not, I will need to oh better. Okay, so it's my my phone, so sorry. Maybe they will uh no. Okay. So we don't know. So what I was hoping is here after uh, in bracket you can have like the size of the of the number of work group and local size or whatever, and we'll be able to see that indeed between the, we like you say it was not an apple to apple comparison, but I guess we maybe some, if, uh, if, if if you look at if you look at the source code, uh, oh, yeah. there should be there should be just uh, global variables at the top. Yeah, it says the work group size versus sorry no the um okay that yeah. doesn't use a, a global dimension that's the this is a secret uh, reduction the, the secret reduction okay so the the global uh range is just the data size okay but in the other group algorithms oh, one, oh one, i see what you mean in the, in the group, group algorithm algorithms. you split the work group size and then can you increase the yeah sorry font um so yeah, see the global range, this global range variable. Um, but actually, we when we're it seems yeah. to be the same. The ND range, my ND single range. No, yeah, it's true. Size. It is. Yeah, interesting. Oh, it looks the same. Okay, never mind. So it is an apples to apples comparison, but it's a very very small. Um, yeah, exactly. So it's a very it's small maybe. reduction. So if you increase it by a factor of say, 
I don't know, yeah. Same. Maybe, maybe even by a factor of 1,000, then. Oh, yeah. But in theory, the good thing is like, because we, because this seeker reduction is higher level, you can switch between different algorithms regarding of the sites, right? Maybe it's not yet implemented, but in theory. Yeah, yeah. Well, once you have your reducer object, if you wanted to, you could have a very, very small global range and you could just accumulate still into that reduction uh, across your whole array. So the, the dimensionality of your, uh, your work group, oh. sorry, sorry your, your dimensionality of your kernel, it doesn't need to man match the dimensionality of your data. Yeah, exactly. You, I see what you mean. Yeah, exactly. And that that can be that can especially with reductions that if if you're able to, um, you know, change the dimensionality of your kernel if if it's pretty much the only thing you're doing, then you can get really good speed ups by by doing that. Yeah. So secret reduction. Let's. I think this one, somebody need to. Um, a little bit. Yep, yeah, need to maybe improve in the future. Yeah, so now we see uh, zero. Oh no, steep 10x. So zero 10. So now it looks like. Still a little need more love for the seeker reduction is needed. <laughs> but we are still, uh, yeah, the next. That's... Oh, no. Uh, no, it's like, no, sorry. I don't know. Still. So now we are, uh, no, this one is, no, yeah, the next, sorry. About, yeah, about 5x or so. Um, yeah, that could be, that could be an idiosyncrasy about the A100s. I've, I've done some benchmarking with this before on, um, NVIDIA GPUs, and I find that the group alg algorithms uh, gives essentially the same performance as, uh, as the SIGA reductions, but um, yeah. Yeah, maybe I, I think, you know, how the, the, maybe how it was compiled, the version of PTX or something like that, I think it's just something. Yeah. But yeah, so this is a rule of benchmarking. You are always wrong. All your assumptions are wrong, and you should only trust what you measure. So at least this is always the okay. case. So yeah, this is the rule, so always benchmark. But yeah, so the good thing is, for example, let's say imagine now you take your code to another hardware. You have no way how your hardware will behave, right? On CPU, for example, maybe this is not at all the correct algorithm to use, the one with local memory and everything. By using those higher level abstract, you can always be portable. And uh, in different hardware, in different runtime, in different everything. So yeah, I think it's really, it's a better, a better thing to use. And uh, and uh, I'm sure in the future drop, future versions, this number will match them together because, and also because we are using Atomic, if for example, you use a complex number or a custom data type, uh, it will not work right for the, not for this one. Also, group algorithm. Here, if you look at the atomic ref, uh, yeah, the atomic ref, the type I think is only supporting uh, your hardware may, may not support, for example, more than 64 bytes of uh, atomic. So, in this case, it can be really, really slow. This is what we show, for example, for complex number, where if you start using atomic with complex numbers, this guy will totally destroy you. This is kind of atomic. Yeah. I think that this is it for me. Does anyone have any other question? Yeah, because I think reduction is widely used. So some people, um, maybe especially from CUDA uh, applications, they they would like to uh, evaluate the performance comparison between uh, CUDA uh, reduction CUB, CUB, uh, with yeah. SQL reduction, yeah. Yeah, so let me see so what I have or whatever. What I have is a, an algorithm who compares SQL and OpenMP reduction, for example. Oh, okay. uh, and I verify that the two match. In, oh. 
a few person. So yeah, I would be more than happy if somebody want to collaborate. We can, yeah, for example, curb and everything. And you should, it's always good when you report a bug, if you can say, okay, by doing manually or by using that, I am faster. Because in theory, in this one is purely the amount of effort people have, people have put to optimize their algorithm. Mm. It's nothing really theoretical, right? So, so I think yeah, it's a good idea if you want to benchmark again curve and uh, and just to see if it is faster with different data type and everything to be able to to improve this kind of thing. It's a good point. One thing that the SIGL reductions kind of improve over uh, the CUB reduction API is that you can just have a reducer um, object or whatever uh, within your kernel that you're doing other stuff in. So with CUB, you need to call your reduction and it's um, you, you can't use the reduction necessarily within other kernel code, but in SICL, you can, you can kind of mix it with, with your standard kernel uh, and reduce things kind of, yeah, within whatever else you're trying to do in the kernel. Um, uh, sorry, I think in CUB, uh, you first have to instantiate a, I think uh, like a re reduction option, right? I remember then, uh, so I think they are similar, right? Sorry, I don't, I don't, I don't quite understand. Uh, I, I might actually, I might be misunderstood. I, I, sorry, I remember doing reading of this a while ago, um, so it's not that fresh. Maybe, maybe you're correct. Maybe you are correct. Um, For example, yeah, this code is doing uh, this comparison between, you see here I do a, a user reduction, where you modify either an array or, for example, maybe just plus one to avoid. And after here, you do it in OpenMP, mm -hmm. where in OpenMP, you need to be a little more careful to avoid the data transfer, right? Because if not, you will always do the data transfer. So you need to use all this kind of uh, is device pointer, use device pointer. And you compare the two of them and see if they are the same performance. And uh, if they are not, you open a, a bug to the slowest one saying, <laughs> So, so yeah. are you compiling it on the um, targeting an Intel GPU? Yeah, this one is an Intel GPU. So, but I, you can just do everything. OpenMP is a pragma, so right at the, at worst we will not run. So it's okay. And the secret, you can put some if def if you want. If you if you don't want, if you have two compilers, for example, you want to compare. I don't know Clang. A regular Clang with uh, with OpenMP, LLVM Clang with OpenMP versus DPC plus plus or something like that. You can use the code, right? You just need to put some if def to oh. avoid the uh, to avoid and after you compare. So is this program in your in the repository? Uh, I can put it. I can send it to oh, you. I yeah, can I think this, 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 this program. Yeah, this may be interesting for people who who look at uh, inter inter interoperability. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, SQL and OMP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I cannot talk. I think we have some discussion with uh, with Codeplay to be able to use, yeah, to enable OpenMP offload with a Clang, with the Intel LLVM to be able to see, but I think it's still you know, ongoing. But yeah, so yeah, benchmark is always good. It's always a good thing to benchmark, and this is how by your, your reports that we can improve the runtime. Oh, I see. Yeah, so please, yeah, so please use a parallel for uh, <laughs> reduction and group algorithm and uh, please benchmark and uh, and let us know if you find anything. And it's really just a engineering effort to do to improve the performance. And if you already found something really fundamental, something you cannot express or something like that, please open a, an issue in the SQL documentation so that we can improve the specification or had an extension or something like that to be able to, to, to fit your use cases and to make your, your use cases working. And that's, that's it for me. Thanks, Thank Thomas. Thank you. That was great. Um, yeah, Zeming, sorry, I, I've sent a link. I, I, I've just linked the, the cub, um, device reduce and as far as I can tell this is just you know meant to be called from the the cub runtime the CUDA runtime uh not from I, as far as I can tell unless there's something else in here 
um, you cannot use it in kernels, or it doesn't say mesh as neatly with kernel code as as signals. But I, if you can find something, um, yeah, maybe I can find the right thing. Anyway.